everyone. In today's video, we're just going to be looking at my favorite um, tank setups to breed Epistogrammas and Rams. Now, in my opinion, there are two main ways that you can go about breeding, obviously, Epistogrammas and Rams. So number one is um, a community tank setup. Now, I've used this a lot. You guys have probably seen a lot of my other videos. This is one of the main ways that I breed a lot of my fish. Um, I basically put them in a community tank setup with a bunch of other different types of fish. And I let them kind of pair off and let them spawn. Um, obviously provide a lot of caves and all that kind of stuff. And then I pull the eggs out and raise the fish myself. Now, the second way that I also tried a little bit less than the community tank setup, but I still found it to be very successful, is setting up um, species-only specific tanks to the fish that you're trying to breed. So the, that a good example of that is this tank right here, which you can see some very, very young long fin electric blue rams and they're raising some fry. And this tank is a very small tank, it's only five gallons, but this is another way that you can raise a pistos and rams. So I will be talking about both setups in today's video and let's get right into it. So the first setup we'll be talking about today is the community tank setup. Now for me, I would do this in a tank anywhere from 20 gallons and larger. If you put um, a pistos and a bunch of other fish in smaller tanks, I tend to see the fish fight a lot more. They're a lot more aggressive. Um, they don't have enough territory to really start breeding and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like the, I've had the best results in tanks larger than 20 gallons. So I would set this tank up just like any other tank, obviously substrate. Substrate, in my opinion, is very, very important for the fish. It helps them kind of be less afraid, I find. Um, if they don't have substrate, they tend to hide a lot. They tend to be very shy. Um, they don't attack food as aggressively, and I've just had much better results when I've had substrate in there, whether that be sand or um, gravel, anything like that. So I would definitely put substrate in there. Obviously, the generic heater, filter, all that kind of stuff. And I would put a lot of dither fish in there, schooling fish. Um, just any kind of community fish that isn't too aggressive, anything like tetras, resboras, um, maybe even angelfish, something like that discus you could try a lot of different setups it just depends on the tank size that you have and kind of your stocking and all that kind of stuff it's it's, it's more up to how you want to set up the community tank but i would keep like a cup one to two pairs in a 20 gallon 30 gallon i would keep two pairs 40 gallon maybe two or three pairs so basically one pair of fish for every like 20 gallons or so so that's kind of the setup that i would use um i i personally found it to be very successful this method, you do have to pull the fish out and raise the fry yourself. So you have to have like either breeder boxes and different tank setups and all that kind of stuff. It is a lot more work um, for you to personally do it. But I find that you do get a little bit better results when pulling the fish out. If you let the parents raise the fry, sometimes the snails get the eggs. Sometimes, you know, like they eat the fry. It takes them a long time to learn how to raise um, the fish. And there are a lot of more trials and different things like that. But when you're raising the fry yourself, it's a lot more, you have to be on time, you have to feed them three times a day, two to three times a day. You have to be there every single day and you have to you know, make sure to feed them, make sure the water quality is perfect and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, um, that is a lot of work, and but it, I find it's very rewarding. Like, it's awesome. I really love you know, breeding all these different types of fish. It's really fun. It's a great experience um, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, a community tank setup is definitely one great way. Obviously, you need a lot of territories. Um, so I would use a lot of, if you're breeding a pistos, a lot of coconut huts, um, different caves and all that kind of stuff. If you're breeding rams, I would do a lot of slate pieces, so very flat slate pieces. So it just depends on which fish you're breeding. I would also put a lot, a lot of plants in community tanks. Um, just so the fish feel more secure, they feel like they can establish a territory, you need a lot of plants. Um, you should add, like, tons of moss, you know, just different stem plants, all of that type of um, stuff. Another thing you need to make sure is in community tanks, you need to make sure the water quality is very um, perfect. They tend to be a little bit overstocked, like my tanks are always overstocked. So you need to be on top of water quality and make sure that um, everything is good. It's basically just a normal community tank setup. It's just you're putting the fish in there and then the rams and stuff in the tank and then you need to pull them out and raise them yourself. So that's the one big difference. The second setup that I'm going to talk about, talk about today is the species-only setup. Um, this one's also very effective, I found. Um, what I like doing is using a tank anywhere from 5 gallons to 20 gallons. In my opinion, depends on the skill level. 
So if you're a very experienced person, then I would suggest like using smaller tanks because you know like a little bit more. They're a little bit less stable, so it is a little bit more risky, but I've had a great success using five gallons and 10 gallons and different things like that. If you're a beginner, obviously try to stick to like a larger tank, 20 gallons for one pair, it will work fine. Now, another thing I would do is if the fish are very shy. So if you're finding that the fish don't really come out to eat, they're kind of hiding in the back and all that kind of stuff, then I would add some smaller tetras, maybe some rasboras. Chili rasboras are really great fish for that. Um, just to get like some schooling fish in there and have some activity so the fish come out more. Uh, another thing that you need to really watch out for in your species only tanks when you're letting the fish parent raise are snails. Now snails are a really, really big problem. Um, they will eat the eggs and the fish don't really know what the snails are doing. So they don't like fight off the snails which is a big problem. So I found that snails tend to eat like almost all of the eggs a lot of the time. So you have to really, really try to keep the snails away from the, the fish and out of the tank as much as possible. Another thing you, you should do is again, substrate is very important. Um, I like using black substrate, especially when there are very few fish in the tank, I tend to find that they don't really um, come out very much and they kind of hide a lot if there is no substrate. So obviously I suggest using substrate. Um, feeding live foods is also a great way to get them to spawn, to spawn and get them to kind of raise the fry. Now raising the fry for new fish, is, it, it is kind of difficult for them to learn how to raise the fish. Sometimes it takes, you know, a long time for them to learn like, okay, how to raise the fish. So it can be sometimes very discouraging because you kind of see them breeding and then they take care of all the eggs and the fish hatch. And then for some reason they end up eating the eggs. So one of the best ways to kind of avoid them eating the eggs and eating the fry is to make sure that there's as little stress as possible in the fish. Now, this is where I really like to use like a very small tank. Kind of put it in one corner of your house where you don't like walk by a lot, where you don't like always come and look at the fish, where they're kind of just on their own. They're kind of there. You feed them obviously and all that kind of stuff, but you let them be, don't put them in like a high traffic walking area. Don't like put them near a bunch of like loud TVs and different things. So I'd put them in a quiet, you know, dark place where they can kind of just sit, they won't really be stressed out by whatever is going on in the house. And they can kind of just uh, live and be very natural. So another thing I like doing in these kind of tank setups is using a lot of moss, specifically Java moss. I find that all of these different types of fish really like, like hiding behind moss and like taking the fry into the moss. So what I found a lot of my fish doing is like when, when the fry are very young, the they kind of like hang out in the moss because the moss has a lot of these like microscopic organisms that are great for the fry to eat so that works really well obviously feeding the fry you, i like using baby brine shrimp um freshly hatched to feed most like epistogramas and rams but obviously the tank setup i would try to stick to just using an air stone or a sponge filter those two kind of work very well for me um yeah, that's, it's pretty much just a normal tank setup. You just put the fish in there. Obviously, if you want to trigger them to breed, use RO water. Um, obviously, cold water changes work well. Adding tannins to the water, like leaves. I've used a lot of guava leaves, and that kind of stuff works really well. But yeah, I've had a lot of success setting up tanks like this to raise rams and epistos. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. I'll try to answer them in the comments down below. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.